Boo! What's up guys? I'm Mike. This is my t-shirt printers. Let's do this. Okay, so I've ordered in some FOSS frames and the FOSS frames are for embroidery machines, well, Melco embroidery machines, they cost a pretty packet, but the cool thing about them is that you can embroider, sorry, the wiggly wiggly. The cool thing about them is that you can embroider into all different awkward places and not be too restricted by hoof sizes. Now, what I thought I could do is, number one, open the box that's just arrived, to show you guys what they're all about. Number two, do a Three day, three day vlog. So on day one today, we'll do a whole design. Then day two, what we can do is digitize the logo, so turn it into stitches and walk through that whole process. Then day three, sew it out. And my aim on this thing is to actually embroider it on a bag. Now bags are, what, what I've found, is you're really limited to where you can hoop on bags and everything. So with the fast frames, we're able to get deeper into the bags, make create bigger logos or embroider bigger logos. I think it's going to be really cool. So let's open that box. Box opening time. Oh yeah, that's the name. But, okay, so I've ordered two of these guys. Um, we'll open up one of them and then we'll see what the contents are. Ooh. Okay, so we've got our uh, long set of arms here, we've got our medium set of arms here, and then we've got a short set of arms in the middle right over here. Um, and then we've got our big main bracket at the back over here. So this is the part that actually attaches to the machine, this this bit here. So you've got your screws, oh, nice space set of screws that come in here. So obviously that connects onto your machine. And then you've got your middle parts over here. These bits here slide in and out depending on the width of what you need. So just grabbing, like we'll grab these middle medium size ones, grab them in and out. Uh, I can see this would be the this would be the bottom piece. And this is where the top piece. It's quite cool because it's got these little guards on here, which are going to help when you have to align something, especially when you're going into a pocket or something, to make sure you're going straight. These little guards are going to be great. So the bottom piece, this looks like it all. This looks like it should be connected onto that, but it looks like the wrong side. So in actual fact, I think this this one's going to be onto here. So that goes onto here box was packed in correctly. So uh, instead of the screw, put a screw into here. Ah there we go. Okay so the screw basically the screw basically goes into this little hole there's a little hole over here that's gotta go into there. And it gets screwed on that holds the, the bottom piece in place. Then the top piece which is one of these I don't think this is side specific. So that top piece obviously goes into there. Where's it go? Spots onto there and it screws in. Take a little screw to get all that right in there. Okay, and then basically you've got your little levers on the side over here, so that just goes flips up and acts like a bit of a crocodile. Chum, chum. Obviously, it's a bit straighter when you screw everything together, but that's the basics of how this actually works. So that's going to be great. That is cool. Okay, so the first phase that we're going to do is number one we're going to design the logo which we're going to do in Adobe Illustrator in a second then we're going to digitize it and then we're going to sew it out so over three days let's get cracking first thing we're going to do is set up a screen recording set up a new a new document so we're going to create a new document uh, 300 by 210 that's absolutely fine right so because you're going to be working in the top area of this bag, we are going to be looking at. Sorry, I had to get a ruler. So we're going to be looking at about. If I do that there, I'll say if we're looking at a circle, we're probably looking at about 120 millimeters, 12 centimeters. I'm thinking, depending on how far we can actually hoop in those um, FOSS clamps. So let's work on about 120 around there. Okay, so. Let's get the lips tool up. 
which is this one here, or your quick key L, and let's draw a circle. And I'm just gonna go to my transform over here. You can go to your transform, or you can go to your um, properties bar. And let's just type in 120 by 120. Should set that on so it links them both. Right, so that's basically the outer circle for our design. Now, I'm thinking we just have some text running on the top, running on the bottom, and some few little graphic elements in the middle to zazz it up. So let's just make a few layers here as well. So I've just gone to my layers palette and added a few um, layers. And I'm going to copy this circle. So I'm basically just gonna select it, go Command C, or you can go up to your menu over here and just copy. And then I'm going to just um, select my next layer up, layer two, and I'm going to go Command F. And that places it exactly where your previous one was so it doesn't move it's exactly where it was and I'm going to, now I'm going to take that in a little bit so this is where our text is going to basically run from around here and around here so all I've done is I've selected it I've gone hit my quickie E and I've just hold it held down shift and alt and I've just dragged it to the size I want so to keep that proportion if you don't hold shift and alt you know it goes all over the place so holding shift really locks it in place holding alt scales it from the the center point okay so there there we go <clears throat> now let's get some text up so basically let's get some text for the top we will write uh, my t-shirt printers and then for the bottom we can write the create creative shop okay cool so to select both of those the font i want to use i want to use something square for this um i think there's actually a font called square so square just type it in for the top here my little character there we go yeah that's the square font i wanted to use but obviously for embroidery we want this to be a bit chunkier um so it embroiders out really well so i'm going to go to you can either go to your character palette or you can just go up here and i'm going to go yeah let's go bold so you can see how nice and chunky that is now again what i'm going to do i'm going to select my inner circle i'm going to paste that onto a new layer so basically i'm going to go command f and you can see it's pasted on another layer just for ease of working i'm going to lock the bottom two layers so layer two and layer one those are both locked we can't actually select them anymore oh wait our text is on one of those layers so let's just take our text off those lock those layers and which layer are we working on here so layer three and i'm just going to go command f so they just paste back in where they were now so i'm going to double click to select all the all my text that i'm going to have running on the top i'm going to go command c to copy it i'm going to select my circle or my ellipse whatever you want to call it and get my text on part tool so i'm going to go up here with my type tool i'm going to click on it hold and i'm going to go down to type on path tool i'm going to select my put my cursor right on that circle i'm going to select in there so you can see it's now put text around on that circle i'm going to paste my text that i had i'm going to select all so i'm going to go command a and i'm just going to center it and you can see dropped all the way down there now you've got these little nodes you've got two up here then that basically is just as your space from one one side one side to the other so if you had to come all the way in you'll see you start losing your text so i'm going to keep that well we're going to keep it more than half because we're going to make this text quite big this point here is my obviously my center point and i'm going to drag it all around to my center right there okay so let's get our rulers up so for me i'm just going to command r we can see little rulers come around the edges here and i just want to bring drag my guides from here to here and there to this so i've got my horizontal and vertical and you can see i'm just a little bit off there so i'll just drag that back right so i'm just going to double 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 click and select all my text and i want to make that bigger so you can either just click up here to increase your font size you can type in your font size i'm going to go 
command shift and a little close your close brackets triangle which is right down at the bottom and it's going to do that and make that nice and big there let's see oh, let's leave it there for now so we're looking at 32 point size now that's on layer three so i'm going to lock layer three and i'm going to unlock layer two because layer two has our other shape on that we want to use for the the the, the bottom text the creative shop so now I am just going to grab that text quick, unlock that layer and paste it onto our layer over here. So there it is there. So now we can use that. I'm going to double click this text so I can copy it. So command C and select our type on path tool, which is there again so I've just selected my circle I've gone up to my type tool and I've dropped down to type on path tool and I'm selecting that okay now I'm going to paste in my text so the top one what do we say was 32 so I'm just going to go to quickly go up to my text up here and I'm going to type in 30 because I think this is quite a bit more text yeah right again you got your two little um, I don't know what you call these things two little text area tools so I'm just dragging that one around I'm going to center my text again now something interesting happens here well we don't want our text basically to to run on the bottom the opposite way around now it's not going to work the, the opposite way around like that <laughs> so I am going to find that that middle line there so you can see it's just over there and if you drag it to the opposite end you can see it flips upside down so now if I take that, that flipped upside down version, come on, stick for me, over there, uh, I'm just going to rotate that around. So I'm just <laughs> going to go and get my rotate tool, which is this over here. Make sure I've got my text selected and I'm just going to rotate it in to where I want it to be. All right, that makes it a lot easier. Okay, but now the problem is, is that my text is running on the inside and where I want to run my text on the outside. My battery is just about to die. I just got to get a new battery quick. Two seconds. <laughs> like you didn't even see it. Okay, <laughs> so I've got my text running on the inside of the circle and I really want it to be running on the outside. So if you actually just pull up your character palette, so you just go up to window and go type character. There it is there. So I've got my character palette, palette up. You can see you've got this adjustment set the baseline shift so if i actually bring that down to the negative so i'm pushing down you see it shifts to the outside of my circle and that's where i want it because i want it to be uniform running on the outside of it obviously you can see the spacing in between the the letters now is is greater so we could just bring those in a little bit so i just use this this one over here which is my tracking and i can just bring it down so you can bring your tracking in you can see that looks a bit better. Just bring it in a bit to there. Cool, okay, so now it's starting to look good. Okay, so let's just close that character one. All right, so we're circle. We've got text at the top, text at the bottom. Um, let's get some, I'd like some something to fill up these areas on the side here. So I don't really want dots. I'd rather let's just go uh, let's use the good old established e s t d e s t d okay so i've got some more text there i'm going to increase the size of that so i'm just going to hit my quick key e and then hold shift and alt just drag that a bit bigger e s t d and then i am going to hold shift while dragging clicking and dragging this across hold alt it makes a, a duplicate of it i'm gonna drop it there's an exact duplicate keeping in the same line and was it 2004 yeah 2004 so estd 2004 right so there's our text starting to come together okay so let's make a few little graphic elements we don't need any of this text anymore so selecting those just deleting them okay so very important we're going to save our file for crashes and we lose everything that's not a good thing so command s brings it up um this could just have a bag embroidery embroidery okay so there we go bag embroidery all the settings there are fine 
Okay, right. Okay, so we've got that saved. Now, let's do some elements. I love lightning bolts. Let's get some lightning bolts made. Now, I'm not going to draw the lightning bolts. I'm going to do this very shape orientated, so it's quite um, so it's easy to easier to follow. Okay, so for a lightning bolt, let's create a rectangle. So basically, I'm going to click on M for quick key or I'm going to go to my tool palette and you can see rectangle tool there. So there's your rectangle tool over here. So I'm going to click and just drag that. I'm not holding any keys or anything. I'm just clicking and dragging a shape. So light, the top of the lightning bolts will be like somewhere around there. We need to just alter these the corners in a little bit because obviously we're wanting something to look like that eventually. But so we've got our rectangle we've drawn I'm just gonna flip this around here so if I go to I swap the fill in the stroke you can push X and it will do it or you can click that little those little arrows there and it swaps it basically swaps it no sorry shift X and it swaps it around okay I'm gonna use my direct select tool which is this tool over here you can click a or go up here so I've got my direct select tool and I'm just gonna use my arrows on my keyboard to just I'm just going to bring that in slightly likewise for this one I'm going to bring mm, no I'm going to take that out I think what we'll do we'll adjust them slightly I think we, let's click on that one drag that out now leave it there leave it there and then we're going to get uh, like we did with this text over here where I hold where I clicked on it and I dragged holding shift and alt I'm just gonna hold alt on this one so I just make a copy of it and I'm gonna drop it over there okay so I've got my rectangle sort of selected over here I'm gonna get my pen tool up so I'm gonna click on P and you can see there it is there I'm just pen tool and I'm gonna hover my cursor over there so you see how it just changes to a plus and then a minus so when it clicks to a minus it means I'm gonna take away a, a node so that's what I want. So I want to take away that node. So you can see there's sort of the the shape that we're wanting for the bottom of the lightning bolt. But then we want this section up here. So over here, using my direct select tool, I'm going to just click and I'm going to drag it off to the side. So you can see a sort of getting that lightning bolt shape that we want now. Um, do you want that to go up a little bit? Let's just level up. Okay, so you can see having a fill what we want to do is we want to use our direct selection tool and we're just going to drag that across a little bit there. That's a cool lightning bolt. Yeah. Okay. Let's just make this a little bit shorter. Again, everything I'm doing here, I'm just using that direct select tool. Okay, so now we've got two shapes here. We obviously just want that to be one shape. So I'm using my normal selection tool, which is V. And I'm just going to select both of those objects. I clicked and dragged right over them. Open up my Pathfinder. You can either, if you've got um, this little menu over here, you can click on that little icon over there, or you can go up to Window and find your Pathfinder over there. So I've got my Pathfinder up. I'm going to click on this first one. I always hold down um, Alt when I union things together. So I'm using this one over here, which is called Union. Unite, sorry. Hmm. Union, Unite. So <laughs> if you click on Unite, and then I'm gonna click Expand, you can see it's now made one object. So now if I change my key line and my fill around, you can see it's just one item, one, one shape there. There's nothing in the middle here. This is exactly what we want. Right, so we've got, a lightning bolt there that we want and now let's have these going around it's going to take that what I'd like to do is have that right so I've just got my um, selection tool I've dragged it in here and I'm going to rotate it slight, slightly because I think we want them bursting out from the center so I've selected my rotate rotate tool with with a quick key R you can see it comes up with this little node in the middle there and I'm just gonna rotate it that way there okay now that should be cool I'm gonna hold shift and alt whilst I drag and you can see the cursor changes as, as I hold alt it gives us like those 
two little cursors at the same time. Then I'm going to drop it. Now I'm going to, I want to basically flip that over to the other side. So quick key, I click O, or you can go up to your tool pad and it says reflect tool. And I'm going to hold shift while clicking and dragging the opposite direction. And you can see it, how it flips from one side to the other, to the other, to the other, to the other, blah, 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 to the other, to the other. To the other. And that's basically what I want there. So I want one shooting off that way, one shooting off that way. And now I'm going to select both of those, click and drag them up, holding Shift and Alt. Okay. Whilst I've got them selected, get my Reflect tool, O, and I'm going to flip them facing upwards. So you can see now those are facing upwards. Okay, cool. Now, what else do we want? let's create a light bulb so on the side of my padded over here you'll see when i'm shifting around on my page i hold my i actually get this little hand tool the easiest way to get the hand tool is just hold space bar and it brings up this hand tool and you can see you can drag anywhere around just a nice clear area where we can work okay so let's get the uh, rectangle tool up again which i click m which is this little one over here rectangle tool and uh, let's make a light bulb so there's our basic shape we're going to start with there let's make it like a a vintage light bulb one of those new, new age old school vintage light bulbs if that makes sense <laughs> so first thing i'm going to do is just flip the fill in the key line around so hold shift hit x it's not screen power off so we just flip those around and I'm going to select, um, okay, right, better idea. Same as we did with the circles on the inside when we were doing the text, I'm going to select my rectangle, copy it, paste it on the top, right? Then whilst I've got one of my rectangles selected, I'm just going to hit E and I'm going to drag it in. So I've just use the transform tool and I'm just going to drag it in. The reason why I'm going to do doing it this way is because when I drag these corners in here, I want them to be symmetrical. So I want them to be the same other side and that's it's just an easy way of doing it for me. So selected that in. I'm going to hit V to get my pointer tool and I'm just going to click off. Right. So we want to drag these corners to here to, so we want to drag this corner and this corner both into there and there respectively. So I'm going to get my direct select tool A, which is that one over here, and click on that corner. I'm going to hold shift, drag it in to till it snaps, and then I'm going to click on this corner here, hold shift, drag it in till it snaps. Okay, cool. And then what I want to do is let's select this inside one. Let's delete that. Now the, this is this cool feature in Illustrator that's happening now where you can get your direct select tool. I'm gonna select that corner and I'm gonna select that corner. And I'm, you can see it gives us this, these two little, I think I'm radius tools in here. So you can see it gives us that little curve I've show you on this side. You can see there's a little curve in there. So as I select on there and I drag it in, it creates a radius. Really, really easy. It's much easier than having to draw circles, then copy and paste them in, and then join them. That works really well. Okay, so now in the center of of this, let's make it a little, just give it a little bit more um, graphic appeal. I'm just gonna click on one of my rulers, I'm gonna drag it to the center so I know where the center is. I'm gonna zoom in, so I hold my um, command and spacebar, and I zoom, you can just zoom in and out while holding them. Get my pen tool up, P. Uh, I'm going to do the opposite of what I did earlier with the lightning bolt. I'm going to add points now. So you can see it says plus on over there. So I'm going to click on that one. That's right. Um, clicking on it again over there and clicking again over there. Then I'm going to get my direct select tool. Click on this little bit here. I'm going to drag that up. Okay. So you can see we've created um, a little triangle select the top node over here and I'm going to click and drag just to round it a little bit so it's not so harsh. And there if I zoom out that's starting to look like a, starting to look like an apple. Right so likewise how we did these radiuses 
at the top of the light bulb we want to do them at the bottom of the light bulb so direct select tool a select two bottom nodes and it's just bring them in slightly there yeah okay cool now what we want is the little um what do you call the elements on the inside so i'm going to get my ellipse tool so you can go l or click up here and select your ellipse tool and those little elements how do they look they kind of loop so we will just draw click and drag a loop um, i'm going to hold shift and alt drag that across over here to make another version of them let's just get them centered i'm just going to zoom in a little bit to get them centered there uh, that's about center there okay so we've got those two little loops we need a piece joining in the middle so let's get a piece joining in the middle over here all right it'll all come together in a second let me just get my head around it yeah cool okay so i'm going to zoom in let's just get those round about right there okay so now i'm going to cut the top of the circle obviously because we don't I, what i'm envisaging we don't need the top of the circle so i'm going to hit a, the quick key c and you'll see it brings up this little scissor tool over here and i'm just going to cut the node there and cut over there and you can see and it's basically segmented off that bottom section so i want to select the top section because that's the section i don't want click on it delete and it's gone so we've got the little connection there what i can see there's just a little overlap there i just want that to come in a little bit so i've got my direct select tool dragged it in a little bit and we've got that shape there now i'm going to get my pen tool and we are going to obviously the element comes from like the bottom somewhere or more or less the side um let's select from about here i'm going to go to there and i click and drag i'm just going to make it a little bit curvy yeah that's cool okay and then i'm going to do the same when i hold shift and alt drag it over here and use my reflect tool quick key o flip that around and i'm going to drag it to there so you can see that starting to look like a light bulb okay so let's make this outside border a little bit thicker so what i'm going to do i've selected it i'm going to my stroke palette over here if you don't know where your stroke palette is and it hasn't come up just go to your window and you'll see it says stroke so i've got my stroke palette up I want the stroke to go from the inside out, so I'm going to go align, align stroke to the outside. So I click on that, and you can see it kind of gives the shape on the outside. And I'm going to increase the weight of that, and I'm going to select the inside. This this bit here. So I'm just going to select over everything, and then I'm going to deselect my outside of my actual bulb with the glasses um let's put that i don't know they're different strokes as sizes so let's just put that at three for now it's fine i'm just going to round the corner so that we hide these little bits over here you can click and drag them in but you'll see i'm just going to round the corners and that they, they just disappear right so that's that part of the light bulb now we need that little um screw section in the bottom so again let's get our square tool or rectangle tool sorry so quick key m i'm just going to click and drag that there okay let's flip our stroke around so shift x or you can click over here oh, over here uh so shift x there we go and i'm going to hold my command key and then drag the my radius tool in and you can see that's whoop, that's select that now I'll, let's just make two of those that size so i've hold my shift to drag it down i'm going to make a quick key so that we get the even even spacing between the two and just you go command d and just duplicates it so you got a, a nice even spacing between all of them okay i'm going to use my direct select tool bring that there slide that in and then let's just center that by dragging it there and you can see that starting to 
thinking maybe that looks a little bit thick. Hmm. Okay, let's delete those. Try again. So, marquee tool. That's a bit better. So drag that into the center. Drag that down, holding Shift and Alt. Apple Command D, sorry. That's looking a bit better. Yeah, that'll be a bit better. Right, I can just select them all at the same time. Hold my Command key. Bring in those radiuses. Radiuses? Radii? Hmm. Direct select tool. Drag that in. And there we go. Yeah, that's looking a bit better. Okay, cool. So, I'm going to get my selection tool, drag a marquee over the whole thing. Group it all together, which is Command G, or you can go Object uh, Group. Okay, and I'm going to put that in the center of our design. And let's just make that, let's make that a little bit smaller because there's something else I want to add to this. I saw it on my desktop when I was saving, so let's do that there. Okay, obviously with every light bulb, you've got to have those little sunbeams coming off. So what I'm going to do is let's get the, our pen tool up. So P or you can select your pen tool and let's get just click your first point and your second point. <clears throat> Let's swap our, swap our stroke and our fill around so we can see them. I'm going to go over here to my stroke and I'm going to round the caps. And let's just get a nice size going for it. There we go. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Right, so now we basically want that, those to go nice and evenly spaced around. So we can do it two ways. I'm going to select my sunbeam, command C, so I'm going to copy it, okay, and then I'm going to command F to paste it on the top. I'm going to get our rotation tool again, so R or rotate, and you can see I'm going to select that little, basically this is like our anchor point, so I'm going to put our anchor point, click and drag it, and put it down here. Let's just see where it goes, yeah, that's cool, and let's put one there. And I'm going to use that same command I used earlier, Command D, because it gives us the, the right steps. And you can see that goes, yeah, that's looking cool. Right, so I'm going to select, oops, I'm going to select this one, and I'm going to hold Shift and select my other one I created. And I'm going to go Command F, ah, sorry, Command C to copy it. Right, deselect by just clicking off, and Command F to paste it in exactly the same place get our reflection tool up which is O and you can see there's our little node over here I'm going to click and drag that on our center guide here hold shift and click and drag you can see which way I'm dragging my mouse I'm dragging it this way so it pops onto the other side right let's deselect that zoom out so you see it's all coming together there now nicely quite nicely now okay cool I'm actually going to just click on these I'm a little, ooh, what's that, layer one, what's on layer one, okay. I'm just gonna select my outer circle. Um, before, we, before I do that, select the outer circle and I'm just gonna increase my stroke weight on it so it just makes it a bit more chunky. Then I'm gonna lock it, which is command two, the, the digit two. So you can either go command two or you can go up here to your object, locked, and selection. And there we go, it's locked, you can't select it. It's basically what I want to do. Every time I seem to be selecting, I seem to be selecting everything I don't want to. So let's lock that layer. We'll lock that layer. So I'm just selecting the layers that I want locked and just come on toing them. Right, so I'm going to click that. I'm going to drag it down a little bit. I just want a little bit of space between those two there. While holding shift, just to keep it in line. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so that other little object I saw earlier, which I wanted to get with a squeegee, which is this one here. Just open that. There's my little squeegee. I'm going to copy that in and I'm going to paste it on here. So I thought our squeegee could go down this little area here, which I think just as well, we look cool. Right. The way the squeegee is at the moment, I don't really want it that way, I want to kind of reverse it round. So, I'm going to copy my squeegee, I'm going to 
go command F to paste the squeegee on the top. Let's just change the color of it. So I'm opening my swatches palette. Uh, I'm going to select black. I'm going to swap, swap my stroke and my fill around again. Okay. I'm going to go to my strokes and let's, I'm going to go, yeah, line the stroke to the outside again. It's going to put the rounded, uh, the rounded corners and caps on. Um, and then I'm going to increase my weight. Yeah, I'll round about there. I'm just trying to think of the embroidery. I think, yeah, that'll be cool. So you can see it's gone and increased a nice key line around my, or a nice stroke around my squeegee. So what we want to do, while that's selected, I'm going to go up to Object, I'm going to go Expand Appearance, and you can see it's created all those, all these lines. So it's not that single line that it was over here, it's now a double line. So I've got a line here and a line there. I'm going to hold down Alt while clicking Unite. Wait, sorry. I'm going to ungroup everything first. So you can either go Command Shift G or you go Object Ungroup. Okay. Now I'm going to hold down my Alt key while clicking Unite, and then I'm going to click Expand, and there we go. So now you can see it's gone completely to the outside. We don't want these little gaps in in here. So I'm going to get my Direct Select tool. I'm going to select that, just a corner on that line so you can see I get a little square. I'm going to hold shift, select that, hold shift, select that, hold shift, select that, delete everything, backspace, twice, and then it's gone. I don't want this little area over here, so I'm going to bring up my pen tool. I'm going to hover over there, minus, and you can see that is gone. Okay. So, but now my squeegee is completely gone, so I'm going to select the new squeegee outline that we have go apple sorry command x select my squeegee command b which sends it to the back and now you can see it's at the back right so i'm just going to take my squeegee as it is okay and i'm going to punch it through there now i know when we embroider these this little area here may be a bit of a problem because it's probably below a certain size so what we can, well, we'll deal with that in a second. So I've selected my squeegee, I'm selecting my outline, and I'm going to hold my option key, hit the minus front, and you can see it punches all the way through there. Okay, cool. Let's just hide my rulers quick and you can see. So there's a embroidery that we're going to be doing on the back. Hmm, looking good. So... We said it was going to be about 120, which we've kind of sized it to if we go, oh, wrong. So um, first of all, let's unlock everything. So I'm going to go up to my object, unlock all, or command alt 2, and then unlocks everything. I'm going to outline, a very important thing to do is outlining your font. It's a nightmare when you send your design out to somebody and they don't have the same font and then you don't get the right font. So I'm just going to go Command A to select everything, Command Shift O, and that outlines everything. So basically, you can go up to Type, uh, where is it? Mm. Let's type Create Outlines. There we go. There. So up to your Type Create Outlines. Command Shift O, okay, Ooh. and then come on, converts everything to an outline. Okay, so for embroidery, I don't want to go below about one mil to one point five. So I'm just going to get my marquee tool up, and this is pretty important to, to think a little bit ahead when you're designing things for embroidery. So that there is 1.5 millimeters. I've typed it in on my properties um, palette over here. It's 1.5 millimeters wide. So if we have a look, if I just drag this over to these areas over here, you can see that's 1.5 mils wide. So if I just click and rotate that round, you can see how different that is. Let's just make that one millimeter. Okay, so you can see that basically that line here, this line here is going to have to expand out. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to basically just click and drag it over. Now, I'm going to drag that there, make it thicker. Likewise, for this line here, that line there will be fine. 
that area over here is going to be a little bit of a problem. Okay, so I'm just going to go. I'm just going to paste it on the top. Group everything. And group. Right. So this little area here, you can see how small that is there. That's probably not going to work for embroidery very well. So I'm going to get my direct select tool, and I'm just going to bring that down over here. And I'm going to delete all those little points over here. Uh, all these little commands that I'm using now, I've gone through all of them. So I'm just using my pen tool and I'm just minusing off those little nodes. Right. So minus that node, minus that node, minus that node. Okay, I don't need to really worry about those ones there. Okay. So it still looks like a squeegee. And yeah, that's cool. Let's just drag that thicker there because we're not going to get that out of it. Okay. That's about your mill space in there. Right, so we've chunked up all of that. Now let's have a look and make sure that our element inside our light bulb is going to be okay. Because I can just see it's like a tiny bit. You can just see if I rotate this, oh, it's pretty much on. Pretty much on. The only problem that I would worry about here is to make sure when we're doing it, the embroidery is the center part's got enough area so that when the stitches go in, you're not hammering that. that this inside section over here and creating a hole in your actual fabric <clears throat> so i'm just going to take that ungroup it um and let's probably make these a little bit wider coming out this way it's probably wiser yeah okay so i'm going to delete that let's take that put it up there okay so i'm just dragging that across over here uh, we wanted to make it slightly wider, right? So make that wider. Click this one over here. Drag that out of it there. Uh, use that scale tool and just dragging it out a little bit further. Okay, and let's just center those bits here. And it makes that there. Cool. And then. Let's select that with my direct selection tool. Click on that, just give it a little bit of a curve. Let's delete that one. Holding Shift and Alt. My Reflect tool, O. Holding Shift again. Just dragging it there. Right, yeah. Cool, okay. So, now what I want to do is outline all of these strokes here so i'm just going to ba basically want to do i'm going to select all so command a then i'm going to go object expand appearance oh okay not that one let's go path outline stroke and you can see it outlines all of those lines there so what was in here was those uh, just lines as such if i expand the paths it turns them all to outline strokes, which is what we want when we're sending it across to the digitizing program. Otherwise, it just gives us these very, very thin lines and they, then, then we can't use them very well and we can't see what we're trying to digitize. Okay, cool. So that is that, which is gonna go on our bag. I think it's gonna be pretty cool. I think all we do is just jazz it up with some color though. I wonder if we should take these lighting bolts and make them just a little bit less harsh in actual fact. So, select the lighting bolts. I'm going to flip my key line and everything around. Let's just do the corner thing so they're nice and rounded. Uh, and let's also put the key line on the outside or the stroke on the outside and just make them thicker. Yeah, that's cool. There we go. Let's make it a little bit more punchy. Okay, again, we've got to select our lighting bolts not the outline and outline the stroke okay so let's outline the strokes let's make because the bag is gray let's get a gray background going here so we definitely don't want that in a full area because we'll be here all day trying to embroider that out so let's just make a background there i am going to get my direct so direct selection tool click on this wide area delete it okay and I think what we should do is make uh, make it a white and a yellow embroidery so let's make uh, 
this text let's make this text here white should we have a white outline so I'm just selecting the elements that I want different colors let's make all these bits here so as I'm selecting them I'm just holding shift so I can select multiple items uh, let's make those bits there just gonna group them and let's make them yellow yeah now it's cool I should make those bits there white just group them so we can just change them if you want to let's make the squeegee white yeah I think oh, there's those two little lines I added in there that haven't gone in I'm just gonna un unite everything so holding alt unite that yeah okay uh, let's make we should make that yellow yeah and then those ones white or yellow i think white looks good no oh, white let's make them white yeah okay so let's make them again let's make them white there we go cool and that is that so happy with how that design's turned out tomorrow we're going to go through the whole digitizing process where we turn this design that we just did here into a stitch file so that the embroidery machines can actually read it and process it. Looking forward to that. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit that like button, and I'll catch you on the next one. I'm out of here.